We're going to see how you can access files and other materials from this course. As you know, everything you need to follow along this course is available on the main website. But in some instances, particularly to follow along the more practical side of the course, you will need to download specific files into your own computer so you can load them up on uh, JupyterLab. So let's start by jumping on the desktop and seeing everything that you will need. So you're going to need a browser that is connected to the internet, and you're also going to need an instance of JupyterLab that is running on your own computer. In my case, the instance of JupyterLab is looking, the file browser on the side panel here, I have it looking at the desktop. So when I download a file on the desktop here in the background, you will be able to see it here. In your case, you could, for the example, do the same, or you could pick another folder if you're organizing your files in a different way. So we're going to look into two particular uh, actions. One is downloading a single notebook. You will see that some of the practical, some of the hands-on sessions that we have, you can download them as an individual notebook. And the other option we're going to see later is how you can download the entire website of the course with all of the materials. So let's start with downloading a single file. Now, let's say that you've come to the to block C, for example, and you have hands-on here. This is uh, an interactive notebook that tells you how to map, how to make maps in Python. And you can see that the, the page has a lot of code, right? There are code cells here and code cells here and so on. Now, when you're, if you want to follow this along interactively, you have two options. One is you can come to Jupyter Notebook, create a new notebook yourself, and start, I'm going to toggle this and move it here actually, and start copying and pasting. This is one option that you have, or even writing it entirely on your own. And we can run these and the code is evaluated. Now, sometimes, particularly for the hands-on sessions, it's more effective to start with the notebook that contains all of the content already and then run it directly on your own. So for that, let me toggle this back just to keep it nice and, and clean. What we're going to do is download this page in the format of a notebook. So to do that, you can come here and automatically, when, whenever you hover your mouse over this down arrow, two formats appear. You can download the file you can print it from your browser as a PDF if you want to then take notes or, or edit it. Or as in this case, you can download it as an IPNB. So let's go ahead and I'm clicking here and automatically these downloads. I have my browser set up, so automatically is downloaded as a file here. And you can see that it's downloaded a labc.ipnb file. Now, if then I come to my Jupyter Lab instance, remember that I said that I had the file browser looking into the notebook, so, sorry, looking into the desktop. So already it's showing me this lab C. So this lab CIPMB file here is the same one here, it's pointing to the same file. So since Jupyter Lab is seeing it, I can open it and it takes a second, but it's loading up the entire page. Now let me toggle that off and toggle this off as well so there's a bit more space. And you can see how we have the same content. Here is rendered as a website, here is rendered as a notebook. And once it's part of my JupyterLab instance, I can run it and get on with the, uh, with the section of the course. Now, the second option that I mentioned that it's available as well is downloading as a one-off the entire course, all of the materials. Let's see how we can do that. So we're back on the 
website. Let's toggle this back off. And we can come to the infrastructure section, which documents how the the book is built and what is the backend that it's using, etc. The interesting part is that there is an aspect, there's a section on the GitHub repository that holds all of the data. And even more interestingly, there's a zip download that you can go directly. So automatically you can click and my browser see here how it's downloading the entire um, website as a compressed zip file. Okay, so this is going to take a second. Now this may take a little while depending on your connection, but once it's downloaded, you should see, as I see here, a zip file that in my case takes 315 megabytes and that contains everything that you will need for the course. So you can right click on Windows. This uh, can be done with extract all and in Mac OS is a similar uh, operation. You can extract it and that is going to take also a little bit. So once it finishes, it creates a new folder and it opens the file browser here for us to see. And this is important to know that as you can probably experience, this will take a while, but you only have to do this once because this contains all of the materials of the entire course. So we can check in here and inside content, you should be able to find every block that the website has. And again, we can then go back to our Jupyter Lab instance. And here there is the GDS Course Master folder, which we can enter and enter again, and we can see the same thing. So if we go into content and we were looking at lab C before, so we can enter on block C and then here is lab C, we can open it as a new notebook. And this is going to be exactly the same notebook that we've downloaded individually in the previous example. So two ways, two ways to access data for this course. Either of them is fine and you can combine them if you want.